and then guess what? Uh, they come out, they they spread their wings, and then they fly and they fall to the ground and die. You know why? No. Because the struggle of getting themselves out of the cocoon pumps blood into their wings, which allows them to fly. <music> Um, so you stayed one night at Moe's, mm -hmm. and then... Messers for like a week straight. Messers for a week straight. Oh, uh, then I stayed with a, uh, a friend, uh, that I went to high school with. What's this, the, the, the trend, transvestite, uh, transgender, whatever, I don't know, we call, I don't know the right word for that. No. Transgender no. roommate? No. Yeah, okay. It was actually my ex-girlfriend. I oh. stayed with her oh. for, I think, a night or two. And then after that, okay. I stayed with a transgender. The difference between a transgender and a transvestite. A transvestite has Teach had me. the surgery and no longer has whatever genitalia they were born with. Okay. They have the opposite. Okay. A transgender just thinks they're the other gender and they identify. So they like wear a dress or something like that. Yeah. So she she is a female. She, she was born a female. She's just on testosterone and has her hair short. So I still call her a whore. So I can I her can her whore <laughs> her. <laughs> I don't call her a whore. Right, right. You still call her. <laughs> yeah, right. right. So she's she's pretty strong now. I could probably arm wrestle her. I don't know. <laughs> I haven't seen you're her in a minute. You're gonna have to introduce us. Well, she's the one that didn't let you put your food in ref in the refrigerator, yeah, right? Maybe me and Sean sleep oh on the floor, God. like right next to each other. We're not allowed to use a fridge. Barely allowed to take a shower there. Right. Um. Always like I mean, overcharging us to stay there. Dude, it was insane. Dude. Excuse me. What are you doing? Excuse me. Honey. Oh. Uh. How dare you ruin this for me? This is my show. Yes, this doing is my residence. Get out, Mrs. Gonzalez, immediately. My Caucasian home. Yes, the, the Grand Mansion on Caucasian Lane. Please send help, send as many people as you can. Our community is in danger. I'm scared. You know what Phil called that, right? Uh, human trafficking. <laughs> yeah. I, I, we really felt like you were. Yeah, and that's it was an option though. I didn't complain about it. I mean, you wouldn't <laughs> complain about it because anything that you're complaining about is still a little bit better than what the hell you were doing before. Yeah, it was better than sleeping in a car without a shower. <laughs> and the thing is, like, I, I run into John. Listen, you know, you know I me. Mean? I run into a lot of people. I interview a lot of people, and these people that I run into really don't have a bad life. They think their life is fucked up because they can't pay their cell phone bill. They think their life is fucked up because their boyfriend doesn't want to take them to the Usher concert. They think their life is fucked up because they can't use triple-ply toilet paper and they have to settle with single-ply toilet paper. Little things like that. I had a girl come... <laughs> right. Oh, oops. <laughs> um, I had a girl that came uh, to, to my house once, and I had a lot of people come over, and I gave her a beer, and she's like, yeah, do you have a straw? I'm like, no, I don't have a straw. She's like, oh my God, you don't have straws? How are we going to drink this beer? And she went to her friends and they're all like, what the F? They don't have straws here? I'm like, walk your ass to McDonald's it's across the street, ask them for some straws and come back if you're that high maintenance. I thought I was high maintenance. But you see, like people like that, people like that, they do not appreciate what they have. Right. <laughs> And I've never had a problem with you. I mean, I've seen you progress in my company, but at the same time, I've seen all the obstacles that come in your way. Right. And every time I see those obstacles, I'm like, oh shit, is he gonna be able, you're not gonna be able to dodge the bus. I see the bus, the, the bus coming at you, and I'm like, is he gonna be able to withstand this hit? Is he gonna be able to take this hit? And I mean, I, I was like, you know what? He might be able to take this hit, but if I try to get him out of the way, maybe I'll clip his legs a little bit. And you'll be able to survive, oh, you know, man. keep going. So right away, I was like, when I found out you're in that situation, like, you got to move. Mm -hmm. You got to move, John. Yeah. Johnny boy, you got to get out of there. And uh, I know Marcus moved from New Mexico here. He mm -hmm. got a, a spot with Crenshaw. I set that up for him. And I was like, hey, you should just jump in there because Marcus is driving his truck uh, most of the time. And you need a place to stay. 
So, I mean, now you're living there. Yeah. Life's good. You actually live uh, right down that way. Yeah, like right around the corner. I I keep my reps close to me. So when I go to work, when I come back, I better not see your car in the parking lot because then I know <laughs> that they're not working. I, you know? That's a good idea. I never thought of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I let that secret out. Um, but something did happen again. It's pretty funny. Uh, <laughs> we go to do a road trip down to uh, Texas. Dallas. Dallas. Yeah. And uh, you talk about you were talking about how you, you feel so accomplished because you, you got your car, right? Right, yeah. And then myself, did you, that yourself, myself. did it yourself, yeah. all by yourself, yeah. independent, son. No cosign. And, no, yeah. No cosign. <laughs> Baby credit, got the car. Um, and uh, you missed a couple of payments? Yeah. Because yeah. of the job switch and then supplement and right, right. living, taking care of Sean. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're also taking care of Sean. Like yeah. you're also your For the past son. four years, I left yeah. that out. Right. For the past four years, I took care of Sean, bought him pretty much everything he has, all right. of his clothes, mm-hmm. um, helped him with his graduation. I'm the reason he graduated right. and the reason he's any, like, right. he has any ambition whatsoever. Right. right. Sean's a great guy. I mean, yes. I like him a lot. He's a great guy, just young, needs to grow up a little bit, learn life, which yeah. is, there's nothing wrong with that. Yeah. There's hey, nothing wrong with I'll that. I'll tell you, you got a job. You got a job? Yeah. yeah. Oh. He, he figured, figured it out himself. I didn't have to help him at all. You see, that's the thing. Yeah. He's learning. Like, like, we try to save these hoes <laughs> and... Sean's a stand-up hoe, by the way. Stand-up hoe, stand Sean. Up I hope you see for this. Sure. <laughs> we, we try to save these hoes. And I want to say hoes. I don't mean girls dancing on the street or anything like that. Hoes is uh, unisex in this podcast. <laughs> um, and we hurt them by trying to save them. I feel like we have that thing going on. Like when butterflies, um, they're, they're caterpillars. And if I'm wrong, then write a comment down in there, you butterfly nerds. Um when they're a caterpillar and then they decide they want to change a little bit, they spin a freaking cocoon around themselves, right? Mm. And they go through something called metamorphosis, right? right? Am I good? Uh, yeah, boy. If I'm paying attention in school. Mm-hmm. And then they start to come out of the cocoon. But sometimes when someone's watching that cocoon, they want to give the little little guy a help a helping hand right so they try to open it out and open it up and get them out and then guess what the, they come out they they spread their wings and then they fly and they fall to the ground and die you know why no because the struggle of getting themselves out of the cocoon pumps blood into their wings which allows them to fly but for us we don't i mean we're not bad people because we try to help them out right but right. we, but in turn, helping out them out, we enable them, we make them weak. Them they, yeah, we make them reliant, and then they never grow. So that's one thing. I mean, you talked about a lot. I'm like, listen, I love Sean to death, but um, if you want to be able to really help him out, you got to be able to help yourself out, and you can't have someone holding you back. I'm not saying throw him to the fucking wolves, right? Yeah. But you got to let him go and make his own mistakes. And there's so many times where my coaches have probably watched me and they're shaking their head and like, man, this Roderick character, when is he gonna learn? Trust me, I'm learning. I'm making mistakes every day, every single day, but I'm learning. I just try not to make the same mistakes twice, right? So moving forward from there, we get to Dallas, and um, your car got raptured. Repoed. I know. Raptured. Raptured. You know, <laughs> you know what a rapture is, right? Like, oh, yeah. Okay, okay, good, good. Your yeah, car got raptured. But yes, repoed. And uh, the quickest way to be on your feet is to miss two car payments. That's what I was told. Yep. And so you missed two car payments, right? Two yep. or three? Two. 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 And then you come to me, it's pretty funny, because I mean, all this stuff's happening, like drama, this person's doing this, this person's trying to sleep with that person. And I'm like, yeah, I'm trying to run a road trip here so you guys can learn how to do sales and marketing. And then they come and tell me, um, John's car got towed. And I'm like, what do you want me to do? And I'm like, well, have him come talk to me. Was that very hard for you to come talk to me? Was that hard? Uh Kind of not really. Mm-hmm. I, I knew before I went to talk to you, I knew I had to have two solu- uh, two solutions. Uh, so I did. I remember I had them mm-hmm. before I come and talk to you. Mm-hmm. Um, I think I had actually like four or five. I wanted three potential potential solutions. Oh, yeah, yeah. three potential. Yeah. And then yeah. one of them was last resort. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, your last resort. So uh, your first solution was what when you uh, came to ask me? Uh, like, what was that? Or the first one was a payday loan. A payday loan. I'm like, no. Yeah. That's not going to work. Right. The and second one was? The second one was an advance. Advance. For my, or, or that was the last one, wasn't it? That was the, 
the first option, I said, no, I need three other options. Other options that have nothing to do with me giving you the money. Right. Okay. Right. I know the third one is you wanted to create the next movie of Magic Mike, so you were going to start stripping and selling your body. I was going to prostitute. Yeah, yeah. Um, don't know what the going rate it is for John's in uh, Dallas, hey. but um, I, I applaud your tenacity and uh, the ability for you to throw your pride away, uh, negative pride, and just go out there and uh, I would have shake it. I, I believe you. <laughs> I believe you. I believe you would have done it. Um, but, you know, at the end, uh, at the end of the day, I ended up helping you. Yeah. And do you know why I, like, part of me didn't want to help you out. It, was, it had nothing to do with you. It had everything to do with other people that I've helped out in the past that needed um, assistance. And I have the money or they'll hit me up on Facebook. Oh, Rod, I'm stuck here. Doesn't that? And I give them the money, you know, because I, I really feel like if I'm in a position where I can help people, I should. Mm -hmm. But then that also goes to what is the real definition of help? Most of those people, I was hurting them. I wasn't helping them by giving them money. And I didn't want to hurt you, someone that's very promising in my business, in my company, and take that opportunity away from you to grow and develop as an individual. But at the same time, I knew every single day that goes by, the amount that the car has been towed, it goes up. And so I said, all right, cool. We made a contract. Yep. They also and helped me out another way, too. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 We made a contract. What did the contract say? Contract said that I could not purchase cigarettes and I had to quit smoking. Right. If I'm going to lend you money, I'm not going to have you fucking smoke. Like, well, I, that's such a slap in the face. Rod, I have no money. <laughs> like, I don't know how you smoke a cigarette. Do you smoke it like this? Do you smoke it like How do you smoke a cigarette? How do you, how do you hold it? Um. I did like this. What's the manly way to hold a cigarette? Is it like with a fist to the yeah, side? Straight of your, fist. Straight <laughs> fist. All right, cool. But um, yeah, I said no cigarettes, man. You can't approach it. You can't smoke it. You can't take a little drag. You can't take a little hit. None of that. It sucked putting. I know. I had an attitude for a while. Oh, you did have an attitude. And I was like, bitch, please. Yeah. You better fucking get that shit out of here, boy. Because I don't smoke. I mean, maybe if I smoked, it would be cool. But I don't smoke. And because I don't smoke, my senses are heightened. Right. They're better than yours. So I can smell smoke from a mile away. And when someone comes to my office, I'm like, who the F is smoking? Right. Take that shit somewhere else. Go die quietly somewhere else. I have no mercy for people who smoke and die from smoking. I mean, maybe maybe I'm uh, an asshole. But it's like, no, you're purposely killing yourself every day. You're killing yourself and you're killing your bank account. So if I'm going to help you, I'm going to save you two, two ways. I'm going to get your car back. I'm going to teach you about finances. And then I'm going to – three ways, actually. And then I'm going to stop stop you from smoking. Because okay. if you ever do smoke, that <laughs> voids our contract. Yeah. Right? And we don't work together. And look, I, I, had, I had to hold you hostage to that contract mm -hmm. in the beginning. I don't like to hold people hostage, but I had to in that one. But now you're not smoking. I mean, if you are, you do that little um, – the, vape. the little vape thing. I don't yeah. know the science behind it. Someone's gonna be like, "Well, that's just as bad." Okay, cool. Um, but ever since then, you've been. You said, "Hey, I'm not gonna miss a day. I'm gonna work hard. I'm gonna work hard. I'm gonna work hard." And you have been working hard. So this all comes down to one thing: is why? Why are you working so fucking hard? You got your car back. You got a house. You got places to stay in. You're doing a thousand percent better than those people in uh, Brown County. The, the the best car in Brown County is what car? Probably a 2005 Toyota Camry. Damn. Damn. If Unless you see like you know 2005 Mustang every once in a while. So uh, bro, I bet that person that drives that 2005 Mustang gets all the brown poon. Yeah, yeah. He's just cleaning up. Probably. He's just like, yo, revving his engine, 2005, 12 years ago. That was 12 years ago. Holy shit. Yeah. <laughs> 12 year old car and I'm getting this and getting that in Brown yeah. County. If guys, if you this is not an ad for uh, Brown County, but if you want to make it real quick without actually making it, take your 2005 car to Brown County. Make sure it's at least a Mustang or a Toyota Camry. Yeah, not the but Prius. If you, went, so if you went through with like, if you went through with like a Porsche or like a 350Z, if you went through with like okay, like a like a, a Nissan 350Z, yeah, if you went through with a 350Z. Oh, what? Oof. 
Really? You'd get all the bitches. Man. Why do I want to move back to California? Why, why would I want to go and compete with all these people who are used to these fast cars, expensive lifestyle, when I can just move to Brown County? Why? Because Brown County is a shit hole, right. for one. And, right. like, the people there have no... And I hope people from Brown County hear this, because... Get out. Yeah, get out. Like, because... Get out. There's no Pack opportunity. Your shit. Like, you know, when I was 16 years old, the closest, like, job I had right. was nine miles away in Georgetown. I was walking there every single day, there and back, rain, snow, shine, whatever it was. You know, pe- uh, people... People there have, like, a very off mindset, uh, very different from the city. I call this a city. But, right, uh, right. Yeah. This, this is, it's a city. Like, all they care about there is drinking beer, bonfires, meth, and heroin. Like, Albuquerque takes the cake for meth. I lived there for two and a half years, the land of breaking worse. It's not breaking bad because actual real life is breaking worse than breaking bad. Um so just imagine that Brown County has all that stuff going on. I just, I have just been so out of focus because I did not know how much heroin, how easy it is to get heroin, and how easy it is to use it and distribute it and die from it and then come back to life from it. That's crazy. It's cheap. And it's cheap. It's shit. It's so shit. Mm-hmm.